I'm like, that's my treasure. I'm going to get it. I'm going to sell everything I have. I'm giving up my deity. I'm giving up myself as God. And I'm going down to earth and I'm going to give everything I have because I'm going to buy that treasure. The Bible says in Galatians 2.22 that you've been bought with the price. See, it wasn't about you to earn salvation. It wasn't you to go, oh, I found Jesus. No, God was calling your name the whole time going, hey, come back here. I died for you. Let's go. And you're like, oh, really? Okay. And it was that simple. The Bible says you were saved by grace. You've all heard the term, right? You were saved by grace. What makes us think we have to earn grace now? Am I making sense or am I, am I speaking too fast? Thank you, Josh. I'm speaking too fast. So, in other words, if you are saved simply because God loves you and said, just as you are, sinful, deceitful, grotesque, whatever, in the middle of your sin, the Bible says, while you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. Right? That's the Bible verse. So, if God died for us in the middle of our sin so that I could have a relationship with Him, what I need to understand in order to stay close to Him is not that I have to be perfect and earn my way back to Him. I'm already right with God because He made me right. All I need to do is receive that and love him back. That's it. That's, that, there's not even, it's not even work. It's like, really, Jesus, you love me that much and you just want me to love you in return? You mean I don't have to be perfect? No. You don't have to be perfect. Because when our eyes are on Jesus, we are perfect. It's that simple. You know Jesus sees you as perfect anyway? You know you can be in the midst of your sin and Jesus sees you as perfect? You can be lying to your mama straight to her face and Jesus still sees you as perfect? I think I'm speaking bad stuff. I'm just telling you the truth. You can be lying to your mom and straight to your face, and Jesus still sees you as perfect. And yet, He never leaves you, never forsakes you, because every sin that you committed, that you're committing, or that you're about to commit in the future, He's already done away with, separated as far as the east is from the west, and said, You're my child. You're my queen. You're my princess. You're my prince. Right? What is the Bible called? It's called as Chuck. He's the king. Right? What are the children of kings called? Princess. That's right. So, what are you? What are you? A princess? Yeah. You're a prince. <laughs> but come on. Okay? You're, what are you? You're a princess, right? Do you actually believe that? You better. It's the Word of God. You're a child of the living God, right? He's the king. You're the princess. What are we lacking? If we're the, if we're the prince and the princess living in the palace, what are we lacking? Um, nothing. No. I'm lacking nothing. I've got it all. Why? Because I've got God the Father telling me, I'm giving you all things. All things. You guys ever heard of you had all things before? No. Second Peter chapter 3 says, I'm giving you all things. I'm lacking nothing. I've got it all. Why? Because he loves me, not because I earned it. I'm an anointed man of God that goes forth and preaches the gospel. Why? Out of my own goodness? No. Because he called me and sent me. And he says, wherever I send you, I'm going before you and I'm anointing you to go. Guess what he said to you? I'm calling you. Oh, wow. What, what's your name? Elena. Elena. How old are you, Elena? 14? Yeah. That's a good guess. Yeah. Yeah. Elena, God is telling you right now, as soon as I said your name and said something, God's it's like explosion in my head. God speaks to me sometimes. You, young lady, just need to sit back and absorb love God's love. And just sit and absorb because God is going to raise you up and raise you up. And he's going to put you in a place of ministry. Are you a singer? I'm going to play an instrument. I used to play the flute. You used to play the flute, but you don't sing. Okay. Well, God's going to use you. I, I was thinking singing. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll start singing. I don't know. But I, I believe God's going to use you in mighty ways. He's going to raise you up. And you're going to get a good understanding. This is what I like most about this. You're going to grasp onto a great understanding of what God's love is. And you're never going to think anything else other than God is totally in love with me. Okay? And you're going to grasp onto that understanding, and God's going to take that and use it and explode it all over the world through you. That's pretty cool. God's going to use you all over the world. I was thinking singing, but maybe not. Okay? So I believe God speaks to me. Remember I told you that? I believe God's speaking right now. God's telling you right now. He's calling your name, and he's saying, I'm going to use you to spread my love all over the world. Okay? Have you ever heard of Heidi Baker? No. Talk to, talk to Harley about Heidi Baker. Okay? Harley, I'll tell you guys later. I don't want to get too deep into it. But Harley Baker, uh, Heidi, Harley Baker, there you go. <laughs> Heidi Baker shares the gospel of love all over the world. Okay? So that's an example. You have Heidi's anointing in you. Okay? And they can explain that later. So here's the thing, guys. God is so enamored with you. He's so in love with you. He looks down and he smiles. He says, that's my girl. I love her so much. He told the angels, he says, come on over here. Check her out. Oh, Doesn't she make you blush? <laughs> <laughs> he, he does. He, 
be. He, he calls the angels over and has a party just watching her. They're like, check her out. She's awesome. That's not, that shouldn't be embarrassing. Say, yeah, that's right. Sway. That's right. It's true. I'm not, I'm not making stuff up. I'm saying what the Word of God says. Because we've got this picture, people. We've kind of grown up with this thing, well, God's kind of out there. And if I want to earn his love, I have to be good. And I have to follow this and follow that and not do this and not do that. And all along, God's going, no, 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 no. I love you. I just want to hang out with you in your presence. I want you to always know that I'm there with you and that I'm never going anywhere. I'm never going anywhere. There's no big eraser in the Lamb's Book of Life. Like, hey, you sinned. I'm erasing your name. You know? <laughs> he doesn't do that. He's right there with you. He loves you always. While you were still a sinner, God said, I died for you. So you don't have to earn his love. He just loves you. He just loves you. There's nothing you can do to escape God's love. It's that amazing. It's that powerful. And if you will learn to understand and you will grasp on and you open. How many of you guys have Bibles at home? Let me ask you a different way. How many of you guys don't have a Bible at home to read? Anyone here not have? Is your hand kind of up? Okay, so you all have a Bible. If not, I'm giving you permission to steal a Bible and take it home. All I'm doing is bad. I'm giving you permission so it's not stealing. I'll pay Ryan for it, all right? If you don't have a Bible, you can take one because you need to be reading it. Here's the thing. This book right here, this book right here is a love letter to you. Come on. That's what it is. It's not an instruction manual. I grew up with basic instructions before living life, before leaving earth. Okay? Well, guess what? Heaven isn't when I leave the earth. Did you know that? Oh. Did you know that heaven's not when I leave the earth and I go there? Did you know that heaven's right here, right now? Really? It's right here, right now. You know what the Bible says? What did Jesus say? Jesus said early on in Matthew, when he first started his ministry, he said, go tell everyone to repent for the kingdom of God is near. And then later on, he's doing miracles and signs and wonders, and he's casting out demons. And he says, when you see these signs and wonders, realize the kingdom of heaven is upon you. It's mm -hmm. here now. And then Jesus said, in, 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 the, in the Lord's Prayer, he said, as it is in heaven, on, I'm sorry, he says, on earth as it is in heaven. Right? You guys all know the other verse I'm talking about? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. What's the kingdom? What's the kingdom? Heaven. heaven. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So wait, there's a kingdom of heaven here on earth as it is in the heaven that we're going to go to later. So it's kind of a dual heaven. And we exist and live in a place where we literally live in the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because I have the king of the kingdom living inside me. And I have everything I need. I lack nothing according to the Bible. Because I live in the kingdom of heaven. Alright? That's where, that's where we see. That's, why do you think we pray for sick people? Why do we pray for sick people? Oh, oh. To have them healed, right? Not to hope they're going to be healed, but to see them healed, right? right? We want to pray for them and believe. Why the Bible says, go and pray and they shall be healed. So what? that's not an earthly thing. That's a heavenly thing, right? As it is, as it is in heaven, on earth. That's what Jesus said. The kingdom of heaven is now. We live and reside in the kingdom of heaven because the king lives in us. His original intent was to be with us. Jesus restored the original intent of God's plan. So God's plan was to love his creation. We were created for his good pleasure. And Jesus restored everything.